Also, this man goes snorkeling at night in the eel pit. Let me just throw a guess out there. He's single. <laughs> Let's go home. Have you ever found a hidden gem of a book long after it was a bestseller and thought, how could I have possibly missed this? Well, that sums up my experience with a recent sponsor, Skims. Their Fits Everybody collection is the perfect blend of a warm hug and your coziest blanket. The comfort is so unreal that I literally have to double check that I'm not going commando by accident. So I did arrive late to the Skims party, I will admit, but now that I'm here, I am all in and there's there is no turning back. Bravo, Kim. You know what you're doing. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody. Skims is my go-to. I snagged their dip front thong, their boy shorts, and t-shirt bra. And for those who have had their share of thongs, you know the importance of quality. I seriously never have to worry about being comfortable for anything from long shoot days to workouts to even just walks with the dogs. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every single time. They're also available in sizes XXS to 4X. Believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcasts in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. Welcome back to Wild Till 9. Jeremy is here with new hair. No, it's stressful hair. It's stressful hair. It is. He made a bold decision today. I, it was a bold decision by, by not no, by no, choice, no. I guess. I made it. I was forced into this decision. Yeah, right, 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 right. I didn't, I didn't choose this. This, this, <laughs> this, okay. this life for you. So for anyone with hair or <laughs> with anyone with a, a male person in their life that they care about, that person no struggle that I'm about to speak to. There are a few people in this world that men cannot allow to get away. There are a few, oh, oh, cannot get away. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So let's Me? just start, start with number one. Yeah. Their loving partner. Two, yeah. their doctor. Mm -hmm. And three, in a no particular order, their barber. Their doctor? You put doctor above number- I just said in no particular order. Oh, okay. Right. Wait, okay, hang on. Can we revisit that though and make sure that I'm- As you said. <laughs> So I today had to go to a fill-in stylist slash barber slash hair yeah. cutter person. Mm -hmm. Cutter person, yikes. 99% of the time when that happens, they, they do a just good enough job. Right. This time, however, the person that my, my barber of eight years. This is almost worst case scenario, to be honest. Right. Like referred me to. Yeah. Did a great job. I mean, great job. Like asterisk, possibly better job. And so I'm now faced with either continuing to go. And the problem is this too. Now, every time I don't get a perfect haircut right. from the other guy, I'll yeah. be like. Um, be like, oh man, this guy would have nailed it. He would have uh, crushed yeah. it. I would have yeah. gone to the other guy. Yeah. Because it's the first time he does it. He doesn't even know my hair yet. I know. And imagine how good he'll get when he knows your hair. The thing about Jeremy's hair is that it is one, it is so incredibly luscious. And if you grew you. out your hair, oh, God. like it would be the so most stunning thing thick hair, Main. it is it, it, honestly infuriating to be completely honest. Okay. Um, as someone who gets extensions sewn to their head because of the lack of hair that I have, okay. it's infuriating. It's like it's like the eyelash phenomenon thing where like just sometimes oh. like men just have incredibly long eyelashes. Again, yeah. I spend hours getting fake eyelashes glued to my eyeballs so that That's I too can have. It's also an, uh, it's also partially because I'm half Asian and I'm yeah, my, you I'm also just, roll the dice and might lose your eyesight every time you go because you fall asleep and then flail yeah. in the middle of the- That does happen. The placement process. Weird, we digress. Um, it's infuriating how much hair you have. And if you grew out that mane, it would be insane. Insane. I, I feel the same way about my beard in the sense of it is, it's a, it's a privilege that I don't necessarily need to act on. I don't think that I need to ever see you with a beard. I don't need to feel a We beard. did have a fun moment though, where Jeremy had grown out his, the entire time I was gone over Palm Springs, which is about five days, Jeremy had- That was an uh, accidental though. I just didn't yeah, look in, yeah, I didn't look in the just, mirror for five right, days. Right, exactly. I looked yeah. up for you. Five days, five to six days worth of scruff. And I was like, wait, oh my God, will you just like shave it into a mustache just so we can see? And that was fun. 
It was. That and was then fun. I immediately shaved it off. <laughs> no, but just for the just for the mems. Just for the I mems. just wanted to yeah. see it because that's the closest that I'll probably ever get to seeing you with like an alternative facial hairstyle. But like I feel like I some dudes, if a woman wasn't there to like crack the whip of like, go take a shower, yeah. put on deodorant, yeah. put your shit, like they just wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. I'm made wildly uncomfortable by my own facial hair. We've had to pause the podcast before so that Jeremy can go clip a beard hair that's like poking it's, his lip. Yeah, when there's one little, when they're when it's like equally distributed, not a problem. Okay. But when there's one little curly and it's curling can, yeah, into yeah. my, it's like- I can see how that would be It's like someone just sticking a little like- like A little pin in you. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Well, the hair looks great. Thanks, and babe. speaking from personal experience of someone who has cut your hair before in the depths of COVID, um, and we almost broke up every single time. Your hair grows in such an odd direction. Well, also, well, it was it's the current barber who uh, highlighted for me that oh my I, God. I have Asian hair. Yeah, no, wait. He also, also the guy that cut your hair was Japanese, right? Today? And Yeah, right? T- yeah, today was Japanese. Usually it's Filipino. Usually it's Filipino, but yeah. it, Asians like, so... Mia, for example, loves going to Asian hairstylists and colorists because they just like have the expertise of knowing how to work with Asian hair because she's got like very like thick, coarse Asian hair. And if you have Asian grow (sighs) tendency hair, that makes sense for you. I I, I have an Asian tendency. I have thin white girl hair. Really? I know that like having white girl hair doesn't equate always to having to being thin, but I, I have thin white girl hair. What's funny is before I mentioned that you, I just said you were Asian. Mm-hmm. I didn't mention that you were Japanese. Mm-hmm. And when I showed him a picture of me to like see like my hair, okay. obviously if it was on my Instagram, you're in it. Right. <laughs> so he literally like, he like, he like looked at the picture and he goes, Japanese. He like, wow. like I didn't like point out whatever, really? like, he, immediately. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I said, well, ah, Canadian, it's all your role, big guy. Well. I didn't say that. Okay. That'd be rude. Yeah, I was gonna say I was Yeah, can you imagine? She's Canadian, yeah. stop. <laughs> Uh, so that's my. So what are you gonna do, <sighs> babe? I, we are. I already broke. This up, is, I already broke up with somebody. Literally, today. we fired our gardener today. What do you mean? We, what do you mean? Well, hold on. What do you mean? We <laughs> fired our gardener today. What do you mean? We. What is this? We business. Here we fired our. He doesn't talk to me. I'm not kidding. Anytime it's like since the day the day that you moved into this household, every time he knocks on the door to say something, he said, "Is your husband here?" <sighs> and you know what? This is a gender role that I'm happy to no, assume. I was already thinking to myself, the patriarchy, this really- <laughs> the patriarchy must stop because I'm tired of talking to the, I, I'm tired of talking to people who come to the house with a skill yeah. and, and are, are there to do something. And oh. then I have to talk to them as if I know enough about what totally. the problem is no, to no, even no. tell them what's wrong. I'm not kidding. This is one of those things like real estate and like having people come over to fix things, the patriarchy is alive and well because and no one, it. no one is interested in me signing the check, having the conversation, letting them in, giving them instructions, and I am so happy to I'm assume so my gender role. In for that, <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. What's that? What's that uh, phrase? It's like, um, like not what does the patriarchy do to you? It's what can the patriarchy do for you? I feel like maybe they stole that from something else, but yeah. hundred percent, but I'm here for it. Ask not what you can do for your, uh, <laughs> what, ask not what you can do. What I don't know. Your for yourself, do, but what you can, you can do, do for others. your country. Was that Roosevelt? Um, I wasn't, check, I please. wasn't into this, this country by then. <sighs> this isn't, this isn't I, from my time. I work around nothing but Canadian women. And honestly, you're probably a nicer person for it now. I probably am. You and probably I have are. a higher um, uh, appreciation for syrup. And $50 bills that smell like syrup. Yeah. Show, do we get a, a, a fact uh, check on that? Yeah, it is. Uh, was J- it Roosevelt? JFK. Oh, JFK. That's not Roosevelt. That's Got not it. Roosevelt. Got it. Cool. Moving on. Well, I can't wait to pass my citizen te- my citizenship test now that I know this. That who, Kennedy said that? I actually heard that they're waving, that so many people are doing the test that they're waving it now. <laughs> awesome. I just kind of feel like, and maybe oh, I'm gonna I, get that. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. We have already covered more politics in the last oh, no. one minute than we oh, do ever. No. But please oh, no. go ahead. Oh, no, no. You know what? Welcome to the last episode oh, of Wild Till I know this is what, it. This is what here. opinion this is do right. you have? I just feel like having a oh, very specific selected set of American history that you need to know in the form of like point uh, in like um mm. multiple choice selection. Like the questions, I'm sure this test was made. Can we show, can you check to see when, what year the citizenship test was made? Like, I just feel like, 
since I don't know what the test looks like, the history that they've probably selected to be the representation of can you be a citizen, I'm sure needs to be updated. I think it's constitution based. Is it constitution based? I think. I think it does get updated or yeah. else you would just memorize all the questions. Yeah, it's not like the same 20 questions. It's not like the, like the driver's test. I feel like it's the driver's test. In my mind, it's the driver's Which, test. Which by the way, I did look up and I was able to see verbatim, like the they have a, they have a pool of questions. I think there's 50 questions. They'll ask you 20 of. That's what I'm envisioning the citizenship test yeah. to be like. And I remember I just, I was able to buy the California state driver's test when and I would had, just like, tell you. handed my like license. Yeah. And they just told me all the possible questions. I memorized those and I went in. I, I didn't study for that one. I don't think I needed to, yeah. but I certainly wasn't going to fail a driver's test. That would be tough. But this is the issue. Based on the written. When do you start to, how many, is it a hundred feet, 300 feet? Do you start yeah, to slow? No, no, you, it, you're totally right. It's like those dumb questions that are, you're going to fail on. Those are the things that in school, you read those and you go, why am I spending yeah. the best hours of my day mm -hmm. as a child when I can be doing anything, memorizing for a small period in time, mm -hmm. how many feet I need to signal before letting. I feel this way about the Pythagorean theorem. What a interesting selection you've just made. I have a fact check on the- Oh, okay, yeah, lay it on me. Okay, so it hasn't been updated in 15 years, but the new version is gonna drop next year, 2024. Let's go! And now word from our sponsor, the, <laughs> the United States Federal Immigration System. I was just watching this video- I'm um, kidding, we're not sponsored by them at all. No, not at all. <laughs> Um, I was watching this video from, um, I almost called Phil DeFranco, Dr. Phil. And he, I mean, he basically is Professor Phil, a news reporter, news anchor, Dr. Professor Phil. I was watching his newest video today. And um, Mr. Beast just did a video um, where he had someone from every country come and compete in a video. Every country? And like 200 and so some? he has gotten himself into hot water because of how much geopolitical turmoil there is uh, in so many different countries. And so he's being canceled across. So imagine how fucking hard that would be. Imagine how hard that, that would be. That was an idea that on paper sounded really cool. Totally. And that title, incredible. Someone from every country competes in like this, like Mr. Beast Olympics. Like that's an incredible title, but like coming down to it. And also too, like their team made some dumb mistakes where they used like the wrong flag in some of their graphics, which is an easy, easy like research situation. Well, I don't know if it's easy, it's researchable. It's researchable, right? But like they just pulled it off of Wikipedia and the Wikipedia was wrong, for example, for one of the countries. Okay, well, I probably wouldn't have gone off the Wikipedia. Yeah, right, wouldn't have gone, right. And like, but anyways, like Wikipedia is great at being 90% correct. 90%, but just the 10%, I think it was actually like the Taliban flag that they maybe pulled by accident. And so anyways, <laughs> I just feel <laughs> as if, I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, oh. I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, and so I just feel like, like that's maybe the one that you don't fuck up. I, I, I like, this is a great time to point out there's a lot that you shouldn't fuck up, including that one that she mentioned. <laughs> Should we talk about the eel many, pit now? And many, many others. <laughs> uh, Should we transition from the Taliban over to eel pit? I'd talk about just about anything at this point. <laughs> okay, I, I feel like not enough people are talking about the eel pit. What the fuck is the eel pit? You and I have talked, I've, show and I have talked to you about the eel pit before because the eel pit has been happening for like, Almost, it's gotta be a year now, no, right? No, 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 it's years. Lord. Years? Yeah. Years, the eel pit. I told you about the eel pit. What's the fucking, what, what's the eel pit? You keep saying the eel pit. Okay, I, I don't know how to describe it other than it is literally a pit of eels. So this man who actually lives in Kentucky, imagine if there had been a frat boy Jeremy X eel pit Kentucky crossover in like 2013, that would've been wild. Oh, Daryl? My work, close, Nick. Oh, Nick, got Ca it. Cow turtle. 87 or something. His, oh, got yeah. it. So he, Cow pie 87. he moved onto this property and found this pit under, like on his property. Oh. Yes, we've talked yes. about eel yeah. pit. And yeah. I just feel with the amount of views that all of these videos are getting, I don't know how more people are not talking about eel pit because I know Ooh. for a fact that we're all fucking on eel pit talk. At one point or another during these last two years of eel pit talk, I know that people have seen eel pit talk. I have never been on Eel Pit Talk, nor do I want to be. But I've showed you Eel Pit Talk, because remember he named them such funny names at the beginning? Yeah, I'm gonna have to start segmenting your traffic on our network so that it doesn't <laughs> overlap and that there's not an identifier that thinks that I'm interested in boop noodles and eel talk. <laughs> um, boop noodle or nope rope? Yeah, the nope rope is a little bit closer to how I feel. Yeah, the nope rope is also much closer to how I feel as well too. Yeah. But I did see a really cute little boop noodle go into this like little knit donut. And in-, in If I have a donut 
in my donut, a donut in my hand. That was tough. And a boop noodle pops out. Never eating donuts again. No, no, it wasn't a real donut. It was a knit one. Don't it was, care. It was made for the boop noodle. Oh, it was its boop noodle. It was. It was the boop noodles knit. Knit donut house. So you get toys for snakes? Okay, so that's what someone was like. I this I'm I don't back know. On. Yeah, so, someone was like, "Can I buy your snake a toy, or can I buy your snake a stuffy?" And Man, they were the like, "Amount of times I've been asked that question." Yeah, can I buy your snake a stuffy? And, and I say, "I'll do the stuffing." And cut that, please. <laughs> keep it in. Keep going. <laughs> Should we go back to the Taliban? Let's go back to the Taliban. <laughs> Let's go back to the Taliban. <laughs> And someone, someone, I think knit this snake a little, little donut house. It was very cute. Um, but anyways, we need to talk about eel talk because I, I, we've gotten a lot of Wild Till Nine hotline submissions. I feel like recently about people asking, when do I tell someone about blank? When do I tell someone that you know, like about I'm caring for my blank? When do I tell someone? But when in the relationship would you tell someone that you have a a, a pit? underground on your property of these eels and other underwater like uh, uh, aquatic reptilians that you're housing and feeding and fostering. Uh, hot take. Only one time to, only one time is safe to say this. First date? First date. First date. Yeah. First date. Yeah. And only after things are you think going well. Yeah. Cuz then you're going to immediately know whether like they're down. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could pretty much unveil anything on a first date if it's going well. That's true. And it can be kind of wrapped into, oh, that's like a quirk of their past versus like, if you say that a date like six. Oh, but it's not, it's not a quirk of the past. Oh, but like pre when right. you met. Yes, right. yes, yes, like yes, 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 yes. Your obsession with certain things you sprinkled in, in the beginning. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I don't think, I, well, I think I thought it was like a past hobby or a thing that like you had sure. around. And I don't think I fully appreciated the level of um, commitment you have to some of the weird things. Right, right. And vice versa. But like, if you dropped that date 10, it's like, we've known each other for three mm -hmm. and a half weeks now. What do you mean you have an eel pit in your, <laughs> like underneath where we've been sitting at night? Also, Wait, did, that's so crazy. I didn't even think about that. Right. You're sleeping on top of eels. Right, you're, you're over it. I don't Wait, know. how did he find the eel pit? Um, well, I think that he was just like exploring his property and was like, oh shit, there's this like crazy like cistern underneath. Is that what it's called, a cistern? Yeah. Yeah, underneath the property. A thing that I don't want anything to do with, a cistern. And so like, I found eel pit talk as soon, like at the very beginning. And I feel like I've oh, checked in. Oh, you were early in. to eel talk? I was, I was an early, I was, an, I was real early mm, on eel that pit That and talk. Crumble, yeah. your, your claims to fame. Oh, I'm not, I wasn't early on Crumble. Okay, got it. Just, no, no, you know, just no, eel no. Talk. Utah, Utah has been crumbling for a really, really long time. Got it. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Um, but eel pit talk, I was really early too. And I remember I gave you, remember like some of the names were so funny. One was like Shaquille O'Eal or something oh, no, like no. that. His naming convention? Were incredible. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Let yeah. me see if I can find the TikTok that has the original names. Kind of like you I, have to. I have the first one of like Perfect. when the eels first enter the pit. Yes, yes, let's watch. Okay, yeah, yeah we can watch the-, the Is he adding the eels at this point? So oh, you Jeremy, have you have no, no idea. idea. You have no idea. Am I asking the right questions? Can you uh, full screen this? Oh yeah, thank you. Oh, let's go. Understanding the realm of credit can feel like you're trying to solve a complex puzzle. Every movie make seems to introduce a new challenge. Whether you're just a beginner in the credit world or are on a mission to rebuild, we know it's not a straightforward journey. But what if we told you there's a tool that could rewrite those rules? Meet the game-changing Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. This is not your typical credit card. With the Chime Credit Builder, you are in control. With no annual fees, interest, or credit check to apply, you can use it everywhere Visa credit cards are accepted. And you can build credit using your own money. Establishing my credit was a roller coaster ride of highs and lows. I seriously, I seriously wish I had had the Chime Credit Builder Visa during my initial foray into the world of credit. The process would have been a lot less bumpy. It's not merely about the card's features; it's about the sense of security and empowerment that it brings. Once you have that credit built up, it feels like you can take a big sigh of relief. 
Chime also has a checking account that can get you paid up to two days earlier. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner. They also have fee-free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. You can even pay friends through Chime no matter what bank account they use and cash out your money fee-free. Start building your credit up. Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash WT9. That's Chime.com slash WT9. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Have you ever embarked on a quest to find a new doctor, reaching out to everyone you know for their recommendations? You seek a physician who truly really understands you, actively listens to your concerns, and creates a sense of utmost comfort. After weeks of diligent searching, you finally find the doctor you think is right for you, and then, plot twist, they don't actually take your insurance. And it is the literal worst, the literal worst. Finding a doctor can be so hard and so stressful, but with ZocDoc, you'll never run into that problem again. With ZocDoc, you can locate and book a doctor who meets your needs and accepts your insurance. Finding a doctor who is close to home, works out of a clean, calm, and stress-free environment are all super important to me, and ZocDoc has helped me find exactly what I was looking for. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. I think that's definitely one of the biggest features that stuck out for me for ZocDoc and a huge reason why I personally use it. When I'm looking for those new restaurants to try, I always check the reviews, why not do the same when looking for a doctor? The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 to 48 hours. That's it. You can even score a same day appointment. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. Go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash wild. ZocDoc.com slash wild. We have eels. First look, we have our eels. Wow, that's how eels get delivered. That's yeah, wild. Awesome. Can't wait to get them down there. We have eels. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and get them into this bucket just so we can see them before I let them all go. We have oh. eels. Ooh. All right, I got to get these guys out of this water. Ooh. Oh, they're so cool. Did, uh, did take some names. There's a big guy can be Crunchwrap Supreme. Crunchwrap Supreme! Um, the smallest one we'll call Bathtub. <laughs> then we definitely have a Neil around here somewhere. Neil? Neil the Eel? Oh man, there's more than seven. I ordered seven. Wow, a deal. City to new couple extras. That big guy. Bonus eels. How much do we think an eel yeah. goes for? Yeah, I should have done a count. I'll watch this video again. <laughs> Yeah, how much does an eel cost if we wanted to get a couple of eels ourselves for our own eel pit? We do know somebody that was in the um, fish. The fish. The, yeah, the high the end. The exotic fish yeah. selling industry. Yeah, well, no, he would source and. He was the broker. Yeah, yeah he would broker. <laughs> he was the broker rare for fish. exotic fish deals. Yeah. yeah, that's one of those jobs you only have if you're already wealthy. Yeah, that's, you're so right. That's like, not something that like, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. another job that you would only have if you're already wealthy? Um... I think one of like the top sommeliers like that like uh, can like tell you where all the wine is from from ever, all over the place. Man, uh, I don't know. My um because like we had a lot of uh, vineyards in my hometown. We had a sommelier 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 I sommelier so. uh, course at our college that was like pretty popular. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sick story. No, that's great. Back to the Taliban. <laughs> Do you guys want to guess how much a freshwater eel costs? Yeah, okay, how much is $39. one? $39. Okay, Lauren. Um, okay, if like a beta fish is like $10, I'm gonna guess, just based on extra size, I'm gonna guess like $100. Oh, 
Okay, so they are an absolute steal <gasps> at five dollars and fifty cents. Shut the fuck up! An eel is five dollars. Yeah, and if you buy a baby one, two seventy five. <gasps> Show just had for science. How fast could we get an eel here? And free delivery. <laughs> what? You're telling me I can have eel to door for five dollars, no shipping. <laughs> no, you gotta you gotta place like a eighty five dollar uh, order for that. But so I was gonna say, okay, but if I well, okay, so at five bucks a pop for eighty, so I gotta buy twenty of these things. Sure. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. <laughs> no, I forgot, I forgot about Neil the eel. That's a good one. That's an easy. That's yeah, a no. layup. Um, that is a layup. So, uh, what's the title of this podcast so far? I don't know. I, I, we, we, we've, we've touched on a lot of really fun subjects. And so, um, I, I just, I just need everyone to be honest with me right now. If they've, if they've seen eel pit talk and maybe these, maybe they scrolled away, but like, I, I need you to, I need you to hear some of the, the view counts on some of these TikToks of eel pit talk. It's so fucking but like, that, that applies to every weird niche on the internet on TikTok. They found a way to target the million and a half people who would be interested in uh, threads out of place talk. Million and a half? Okay, the day that he added goldfish in the eel pit has 13.4 million. Can you just play God and add any type of fucking like, like amphibian that you want into these pits? Yeah, it's his eel pit. He can do whatever he well, wants. Well, no, state of Kentucky, you can do whatever you want on your property. <laughs> on your property. Yeah. No, he added uh, minnows, goldfish, catfish, uh, shrimp, but the shrimp were actually, that was a meal. That was not a, a live shrimp, I don't think. Maybe a they were shrimp, live. Shrimp, nonetheless. Sure. Um, garfish, which are basically dinosaurs. Uh, okay. Crabs. Then the crabs and the eels got into fights. Okay. Sturgeon. <laughs> These are all words that like I'm aware of, but I wouldn't even really know what they are. He bought crabs, live crabs from a grocery store. I, there's no way that those are supposed to go into the same pit as everything else. I just love this so much for this random man in Kentucky who has built this insane, uh, gr- uh, like the fact that we on this podcast in Los Angeles are talking about eel pits and watching these crabs get put into this fucking eel pit is so insane. I mean, I'd say it's inhumane, but those crabs are gonna be eaten regardless. I'm so invested. No, he saved no, them. No, he right. saved them. He set them free. Right, right. no, I, I get it. Okay, yeah, let's see them go Well, in. set them free by putting them in his eel pit. Well, yeah, free is better than on someone's dinner plate. Broad, uh, I'm not sure the exact term for it, but that's actually their, uh, if they were like a lobster, that'd be their tail folded up. So they actually carry their eggs and stuff like that under there. So the females have much broader, uh, I call it a tail flap. I'm sure there's a scientific term for it. But that is the first blue crab in. His name will be Creeb. Creeb! One of the reasons I was adding the crabs is one that came up in eight. This is so wild. What do we think like the initial purpose of this pit was? Well, I think it was just like, uh, what are what are water cisterns used for? It's um like way back when to store safe drinking water. Yeah, like water reserve, I think. Got it. Just like an underground thing. But like, like these views are insane. Nine point three, I think, was the million. one of the original so, million. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, nine point three million views. Thirteen point four million. So you're telling me that Eel Talk outperforms our podcast by oh by so so much significant you have no idea so now you understand why we're doing this segment right right so that we can get eel talk onto our podcast exactly oh what if i have an idea we start to um uh pair niches what niche do you think would pair best with eel talk boop noodle talk i think also this man goes snorkeling at night in the eel pit let me just throw a guess out there he's Single. <laughs> yeah, maybe because he didn't listen to our advice though and tell his date on the first date about his maybe eel pit talk. The eel pit is such a time consuming endeavor. There is no first date. Maybe, I mean. Like, do you put that in a dating app profile? Like, hey, name's Nick. Oh my God, 13.1 million the day that the crabs got added. <sighs> wow. I just don't think that you understand how crazy this is. Like, I, I just don't know if you're fully abs- like absorbing eel pit. What else is there for me to absorb? Just how it. crazy this is. This man has an All eel All I'm hearing pit. is that we would be better off if we just quit everything we're doing right now. And got an eel pit. Moved to Kentucky. Yeah. Found an eel pit below our home uh-huh. and started taking 
videos when we dropped off things we picked up at the grocery store to watch them play together. How much money would it take for you to snorkel in a Neil pit? <laughs> the, well, the U.S. is good <laughs> at printing money and they'd have to do a lot of that. How Again, much? How much? To swim in a Neil pit? Yeah. 10 million. <laughs> really? You think that much? That much? I thought I was being fucking the generous. <laughs> An eel, really? I don't think, um, they're not electric eels. Like I don't think they're, they're dangerous. Yeah, but I'm not trusting you or anybody else to tell me, I don't think they're electric eels. Well, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that, I think that that would have been an even more viral TikTok. Well, I'm telling you right now, my 10 million included eels that were electric. I'd probably do it for way less. What's your rate for- For, 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 for yeah. snorkeling an eel pit? Um, there was like one scary dinosaur fish that actually scares me a little more than the eels that he added in there. Okay. Um. So depending if, is the dinosaur fish in or out? I thought we were talking about an eel pit. You're throwing in these weird Can, can we show Jeremy the, the scary dinosaur thing? Yeah. And then after this, do we just wanna watch people give birth for an hour? Like what's the plan? <laughs> Hi everybody. I just wanted to give a quick eel pit update. Thanks, There's Nick. Jason on the left there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, garlic is Jason. eating great down here. And the long ear sunfish is also doing totally fine. Um, he survived down here. Just the big white one is a sturgeon. Oh, that's a sturgeon? With, uh, yeah. Garth Brooks and all the other gar, so I don't think garlic will mess with him. Uh, and I did add three or four more sunfish, and they kind of hang out all, actually in the dark over there with the other gar. Um, Jason's been coming garlic. out with garlic kind of yeah. to eat the tilapia. But uh, Gardas and Garchomp still kind of hide over in that corner. But yeah, there went uh, seagull and vanilla. So, okay. I love that he, like, even though there's multiple sunfish and multiple of the garfish and stuff, he knows each of their names. That's just like based on their markings. It's so cute. But like, that's so wholesome. Do you have to like, I don't know how the upkeep and maintenance work. Does he have to like add oxygen to the water down there? Like, how does this work? You know how you're really into like the tech for the podcast? <laughs> It's the same shit. This man's got a crazy rig in his garage. He would have to. Yeah. Like the logistics to be able to filter that out, mm -hmm. add enough oxygen, make sure they're getting like enough sun, like the right, right like temperature. He basically made an aquarium out of like a natural. An aquarium? He made a small natural body of water. Oh, see, Jeremy's in on eel pit now. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's the enthusiasm I was Woo! looking for. I just wonder if you could automate yes! it. I wonder yes. if you could like get updates if like certain no, levels No, you know what off. he needs? Oh my God, TSJ and eel pit turtle, I, turtle, cow turtle, cow turtle Nick collab to do 24 hour live stream of eel pit. I do think that there's some sensors that you could put in to like- That activate? Give you, well, I just like give you like an, you know, like yesterday in the middle of our like minor hurricane that wasn't a hurricane, like oh, yeah. all the sensors that like were like, you have water in your crawl space in these three locations. I forgot to say that you guys are hanging out with the two, <laughs> with two um, Hurraquake survivors. Hurraquake? Hurraquake, Earthacane. Oh boy. The Hurraquake? Internet, the, the internet's been doing- Do we like Hurraquake better or Earthacane? Hurraquake sounds a little more feminine. Hurraquake? Yeah. Then Earthacane? Yeah, Earthacane's- yeah. That yeah. sounds like a sugar brand or something. Earthacane? Earthacane? Sounds like something that like- uh, an ointment would treat. Mm, yeah, maybe. Um, so we, we were supposed to have a hurricane on yesterday and it it rained for sure. Right. There's actually one big tree that's down in our neighborhood and Mia moved her car last minute, just like on a random thing of intuition, a massive fucking tree fell exactly where her car was gonna be. Did she, she also a lot get her ticket. car broken into? Uh, yes, but that was actually what, um, um, inspired the whole thing of moving the to car. To the car. Yeah. So thank you to the thieves. Right. Kind of. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. Uh, yeah, no, I think that there's some automation that, that we could go in there that would be really interesting. Just to like see what the pH level's at, <laughs> see what the oxygen level's at, see what the temperature's at, see how you would go about adjusting that, but yeah. not over adjusting yeah. it. Yeah. I just think there's a couple things we could do. I think this is just like the most wholesome. It's, I'm, it's calling, like I'm calling monkey turtle. turtle shoulder. <laughs> yeah, what's the name of this thing I'm, I'm following? Cow, cow turtle. Cow turtle? Cow turtle. Is that really what it is? Yes, cow turtle. He actually got the numbers removed off of his username, which I love for him. He was like cow turtle 87432. And he said not And anymore. now he's like, I am the cow turtle, the only cow turtle. I'm about, I'm about to add 1.3 million followers. Yeah, see? Oh, he used to be what, cow turtle 9427? Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Now he's just cow turtle. All original content by me. It's just so wholesome. It's moments like this where I'm like, oh, I fucking love the internet. 
Without cow turtle, I would never know about the eel pit that lives in Kentucky with the sturgeon and the sunfish. Well, <laughs> now we do. And now you do too. <laughs> so Taliban? Anything else? Anything else? <laughs> um, what do you know about girl math? Girl math. Um, Basically, yes. <laughs> girl dinner. Um, well, let me see. Girl math. Uh, let me put my feminist hat on. Okay. Uh, I think it's math that should not be left for a man to do because he'll do it wrong. You should ask a woman. That's my final answer, Regis. Wow. That was that was incredibly... Uh, the PR team would approve. The PR uh, team. What I think girl math is, I think it's when, similar to when you are measuring something, yeah. and as opposed to using any one of the 15 measuring devices we have steps away. Right. You walk up to it. You play, <laughs> you play fucking like, I honestly, put the tips in my fingers. Yeah. And you do, you do this. And I, I do this. And then you walk in the same ish position no, no, over no, to what else you're walk. trying to measure. You, you, you fold and flip 180. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as if you like, you, you keep like, the fingertips glued to the wall right. and then you rotate and flatten yourself again. My favorite is when you've done that yeah. and then like didn't really know. So then you went and measured yourself with it, but didn't actually take the tape measure over there. You're like, that okay. Is, that is girl measuring. Yeah. That's so girl that's, measuring. that's what I assume girl math is. Or it's like, it's one hand tall. Right. With nails. With current manicure, it's one hand right. tall to the tip of the manicure. Yeah. Exactly. You're like, you would give directions. Like, okay, and then um, you're about to, you're gonna take a left and you'll know where it is because there's gonna be a paper bag. No, once you get to the, the home side of the road. goods, once you get to the home goods that always has a packed ass parking lot, right. go left. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So anyways, I'm gonna read you the girl the the, the rules of girl math. Okay. Um because it is so as, as defined by girls. Girls, got it. Yeah. Okay, if you pay for something in cash. And not card. Yep. It's free. Okay. How, do you agree with that? I'm not girls. Yeah, but as not girl, how do you feel about that? I think that <laughs> there's a couple problems with that logic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I fully, because I, I so rarely have cash, if I pay for something in cash, it's like the money, like it, it just feels not real. You know what I mean? Okay. And maybe because it's not. See, like, I have the opposite feeling. I have like, it's like when I like when I use my credit card. Yeah, it feels not real. A dollar. Yeah, it's just it's easy. But then you see the transaction and you right. see the balance. That's why it feels more real. I feel like, where it's like if I take out money, it just says well, like. The, I'm sorry. Are you buying things in cash and not getting receipts? Like, are you trying to evade taxes? Like, maybe maybe there's another level to this. No, no, no. I'm just saying like if I take eighty dollars out on cash back at the grocery store, right? Like, I don't think about that eighty dollars that I tacked on to like my Ralph's grocery bill, right? And so like on my transaction, that would just show as like Ralph's groceries plus eighty dollars, but it shows as one total. So I don't think about that eighty dollars. You've already spent that eighty dollars. I already spent that eighty dollars, right. and so that cash, that eighty dollars, anything right. that I buy with that feels free. No, I'm, I'm seeing the logic here. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you have a business manager. Next one. <laughs> okay. If you pay for something with a gift card, it's also free. Well, now that one I'm more on board with. Okay. So yeah. even, okay, but this also applies that even if like you had to spend the money at some point on the gift card, like if I put $100 on a gift card right. and then I spend that $100 gift card, it's still free. Here's why I think I'm more on with girl math on this one. Okay. There are so many ways that you can lose a gift card, that it can expire. Jeremy that can... just found a wad of gift cards. Right. The so other like, day. There's a good chance that one or two of them are no longer good. Yeah. Or like the company's out of business. So it's like when you have money that is locked in one specific thing, mm -hmm. you, you're going to spend it eventually. Yeah. I think it would be much better to spend it inefficiently upfront then wait down the line and potentially about lose it. the card. Right, because now I have a Forever 21 gift card with $17 on it sitting in the kitchen that's maybe expired. Sick. Like Forever 21 is, fair, is, though, is Forever like- Forever 21, $17, you can get- 14 of, things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Not that I want any of those things, but- <sighs> Okay, um, rude. Okay, if you get a free drink at a bar, you just made money so you can spend more the next day. So like that would mean, so if I got a free drink at a bar, I made money, and so then the next day when I buy a coffee, I'm like, oh, th th thank, God, thank God I made that money last night when someone bought me a drink. That is a positive way to look at going out, yeah? I feel like that one doesn't really apply to dudes because we're not getting many drinks. You're not getting that many drinks, us. right? I mean, it depends what bar you go to. No, I do remember the first time I went yeah. to West Hollywood, they could smell fresh meat. You know, I will say, I feel like in West Hollywood, because a lot of the bartenders are straight, I've gotten more free drinks at any bar in LA at gay bars. Take me to them. I will show you how I get angry. No, I, I think that'd be great. In fact, I would love to go to West Hollywood, mm -hmm. watch you get free drinks from the bartender yeah. while I get free drinks from the clientele. That's perfect. I love it. That's great. 
Um, okay, if something is on sale that I've wanted to buy for a long oh, time, God, I can just feel this one. But I don't buy it. Yeah, I'm actually losing money. <laughs> if you don't buy it, you're losing money. I mean, you sound like the the person who talked to a salesperson that went to like used car salesman one on one. But that makes sense. That checks out. Hey man, you walk off the lot today without a vehicle. It is your own fault. You are doing this to yourself. You are losing money. Yeah, no, I I think that's it's on sale. I think that's stupid. I think that's dumb. I don't agree with that girl math. Okay, okay. Um, if I don't buy myself a little a little drinky drink or a little snack. Pause, hold on, I need to go back actually. Okay. Maybe there's one time. Okay, okay, okay. Share with the class. In a world where mm -hmm. you go to buy something or think about buying something, okay. there is a sale, 35% off, okay? You yes. decide, you know what? I don't need this. I don't need this, I'm not gonna buy this. Okay. And then later, you buy that thing mm -hmm. full price. Yeah. That that kind of means you you lost hella money, right? So I kind of see it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. This is the turning point. Like when you get on board with eel with I'm eel just, pit. No, I'm, I'm I'm feeling it. I'm seeing it. Okay. Um. So if I don't buy um a little drinky drink or a little snacky snack or a little treat for myself. Well, no, no, no. It's not that you didn't buy it. No, you no. were given one. No, hang on. That's not the scenario. We can talk about that scenario afterwards. Oh, okay. So if I don't buy myself a snack or a drink or a treat, right. I'm making money because I didn't buy one. We're going to need to play the video I think you know we need to play after this. Oh my God. So to preface this one, I, um, I'm not sure when this was, but I know that this I was- This is a couple nights ago at like four in the morning. I was downstairs. I had probably eaten one more edible than I needed to. Sure. And I was doom scrolling on TikTok mm -hmm. before I went up to bed. And I came across a video that I, I think was targeted at Lauren. <laughs> but ended but up on your- Tickled my funny bone to say the least. Holy shit. This is one of the funniest TikToks I've ever seen in my entire life. And I hope that I'm not setting it up too high, but no, I've- No, you're, you're not. But um, on, on the topic of treats and something special yeah. and, and you know, to giving yourself a little treat at the end of the day, uh -huh. go ahead. You're not ending your day with a little snack, you know, a little treat, a little sweetie, sweetie on the tonguey wums. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, <gasps> you know, you deserve a little tiny insect sized little treat, <clears throat> mm. little treaty pie on the lippy lips. Come on, <sighs> come on, man. It's important that you come home at the end of the day and put your little feeties <laughs> around a hot mug of cokey coke and tuck that down. <laughs> come on, King. <laughs> Do not deprive yourself of that. <laughs> Do not deprive yourself. A little sucky suck on warm milky, oh, right before bed, tuck me in. You know it'll make you feel better. Uh, I don't know if I'm in on the last one of the warm milky milky sucky sucky, um, but everything else before that, oh my God. That, this, that guy is why I miss not living anywhere besides Los Angeles. Yeah. Because that guy wouldn't live here. Yeah, he wouldn't that, put up with this shit. Oh, I know. And that guy's fucking funny. And that, Holy that shit. guy's funnier than everybody else we know. Oh my God, that was, it, it, just the juxtaposition between going back and forth between just like, I can't, I, I was cracking up. So if you don't indulge, you're what? You make money. So if you don't eat a snack, you make money? No, no, if you don't buy yourself. So like if you're out like doing errands or whatever, right. and if you don't buy yourself a little treat or a snack or a drink, you're making money. Okay, okay. Yes. A little bit of an opportunity cost there? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, opportunity cost. That's exactly what it is, an opportunity cost. Well, yeah, okay. Okay, and then the last one, any money in my Venmo or Cash App balance? It's free. It's free. Uh, that, I think we can all universally agree on. Yeah. Is the case. Is the case. Yeah. Yes. In fact, I'm always like, I get so annoyed when I look at my Venmo or Cash App or any like balance and I have like $17. Mm -hmm. I have to go buy something for 50. It won't let me use that, that money. No, you can't it use It makes you spend new money. Yeah. And I'm like- And that money, that money counts. That money does that count. That $17 does not count though. Right, but I'm like, let me get rid of this free money. Oh, right, 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 but right, it won't right. Let me yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my total is above right. the free money amount. The free money amount. I, it's almost as if they know it's not worth anything. Right. You, you're so right. You're so right. Yeah. They're like, give me the real money, give me the real stuff. But in all reality, it's because they're making interest off that $17. They don't want you to spend that. They do want you to use new money stop so that it, they can keep it. Stop that. it. Do not shatter the illusion of girl math, okay? Girl math. Is there, is there a theme song for girl? I think you just math? made it. I think that's it. No, that's the girl dinner. I know, Jeremy's really in on girl dinner. Girl dinner. I think it's just a great little just hook. Just a good little, good little jingle. Like whoever's making these TikTok jingles yeah. deserves- no, girl, girl, I, I was really in on girl dinner. Yeah, well, 
You Jer- Jeremy, a couple months later, is still in on Girl Dinner, but that's kind of a couple how- months later. Yeah. Not months. It happened like maybe yesterday, the day before. Maybe. No, no, no. Last week babe, tops. No, 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 no. What has Eel Talk been around for two years now too? Yes, babe. No. Yes, Get out of here. Yes. Whatever. Yes. Some things never die. One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, check it off the list before summer ends with Babbel. Babbel will have you speaking a new language in just three weeks. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations. All of Babbel's tips and tools for learning a new language are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. Knowing how to have an actual conversation in Spanish instead of just the word for the library, which is la biblioteca, (coughs) by the way, (laughs) can boost your confidence when traveling to a new country. The lessons are designed so that picking up essential phrases and sentences like ordering food or just asking for directions has become second nature. I think my favorite feature about Babbel is their speech recognition technology, which helps you improve, which helps you to improve your pronunciation and accents. You know you're actually saying something correctly, unlike my entire struggle through high school in French. Yeah, I feel like we could, we could try that for English, actually. <laughs> um, with over 10 billion subscriptions sold, Babbel is real language learning for real conversations. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. 15 hours. Imagine all the time you just saved while learning a... Imagine all the time you save while learning a new language. Here is a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash wild. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash wild, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash wild. Rules and restrictions may apply. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. We're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get the piece that you've always wanted and leave it up to the meticulous eye of an eBay authenticator to make sure that the watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay authenticity guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Since we um, did our own little award show last year, mm-hmm. or last year, last year, l- last week, a couple uh, episodes ago, two episodes um, ago, do you want to go ahead and assign the unofficial winners of the streamies for the most uh, popular categories? Oh my God. Yeah. Streamy predictions. Yeah. So we're going to the streamies this uh, coming weekend, actually on Sunday. They've invited we dinosaurs. Um, I, I am a, I am a vintage streamy winner Is, in you, 2000 and... Are you going back to your uh, your wine tasting class here? I'm a, two, a, a winner in f- how many years ago. Is there a podcast category? Are we getting fucked? Uh, we, the, you know what though? The streamies is, it's kind of the same podcast every year that get nominated. I mean, I'm looking at Airac, Alex Earl, Charlie D'Amelio, Jay Okay, Shetty. okay, okay. Cause so creator of the year, I feel like that's the biggest category that they do. Yep. Um. So the nominees, you've got Airac, Alex Earl, Charlie D'Amelio, Jay Shetty, Jay Dion, Logan Paul, Michaela, I have no idea no, how to say last name. No, 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 no. The, the Jersey girl, Mr. Beast, Ryan Trahan, and Zach King. I mean, this list, I feel like could be three years ago. For the uh, most part. For the most part. For the most part, I kind of feel like these people are all relevant this year. I, it's not they're not relevant this year. They're there, just, there's just there's some been that relevant. are a few that are... I think at a certain point, like Logan, let somebody else be nominated. Yeah, yeah. I also just feel like the amount of content that someone like Mr. Beast is putting out or Ryan Trahan versus Logan Paul is like, I don't know, because he's obviously doing crazy shit, but like content-wise, creator-wise, I feel like... Someone like Ryan Trahan? Yes and no. I mean, yes, totally. But also like, I feel like on 
Logan's side, like his, he and KSI have done a bang up fucking job of like creating buzz and the content around like all of their prime and shit. Oh like, my God. Also so, their fight. Like, you know, yeah. we're going to be watching that day. Uh, yeah, I know who, um, actually I have no idea who I would say wins this at all. Fuck, I know. It's also hard because it's people across different like genres of content. Cause like Alex Earl is like one of the biggest names I feel like. I know that Alex Earl is huge because you've told me Alex Earl is huge. Right, but like you typically wouldn't have come across our content for the most part. I have no idea who that is. And like is. Michaela has, who has been in a shit ton of drama this year. He's like a makeup girly. Like she's in like the makeup guru. So that I would have definitely been been um, exposed to. For sure, uh, for sure. Uh, Iraq. You would pick Iraq, you think? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I Personally, I, I'm an Alex Earl girly, I feel like. Okay. But I'll I, get on board with I you. also think that, but like also like Mr. Beast is doing the most crazy Jay shit Shetty's ever. Jay has got pretty eyes. Jay Shetty has pretty eyes. Jay Shetty does have pretty eyes. So there's that. I also respect Ryan Trahan as a creator so fucking much that like I'm, I could also be super stoked on Ryan Trahan winning as well too. I don't, I don't know how, but how do you vote against Zach King? He's like an editing god. That's true. That's true. Uh, wash next show of the year. Uh, AMP, uh, Bryce, Brandon Rogers, challenge accepted. Michelle Carey. Oh my God. Chicken shop date. Amelia. We love chicken shop. Big chicken shop date fans. Good mythical morning. Hot ones. I spent a day with, uh, Sam and Colby. Um, we should get Sam and Colby on the pod. Oh yeah. Actually I've talked to them and both come on the pod. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ar sorry. I skipped RDC world. I'm not sure who that is. I, I mean, mean uh, Michelle Carey, because she's been on this podcast next. But also chicken shop date. But she hasn't been on this podcast. That's true. So that's true. I also am such a Hot Ones fan. Okay. And I also watch almost every single episode of I Spent a Day with by Anthony Padilla. It's I, a great I show. I don't miss too many episodes. Um, and also I love Sam and Colby, so it's hard. No, it's not. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Streamer of the year. I don't know who half these people are. I don't watch any. I don't watch any streamers. I know. Uh, well, I know we just a talked, couple of those people. We just talked about Valkyrie. Yeah, we just talked about Valkyrie. Yeah. Uh, Hassan is huge. Yep, he's huge. And I watched- Is that Beethoven? That is, I know, I'm not, I'm L not sure. L Ludwig. And it's, Ludwig it's a, it was no. a joke. Yeah. Um, and how do you pronounce the last one on that list? I'm not sure. That's Elon Musk's uh, newest child. <laughs> Funny, Lori. <laughs> XQC. Oh, international <laughs> category. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, well, uh, copy, give, copy. Give it, to, give it to Quackity. Do you know, do you know? No idea. Okay. All right. No All right. Idea. Short form- um, I, I don't know many of the short form people. Chris Olsen. Oh, Next. yeah. Breakout creator. Nobody else, nobody else exists. Alex uh, Earl, Drew. Actually, I think, isn't Rich Black Guy really funny? I don't know if I know his I content. feel like I, oh, Connor Price, also really funny. Connor Price is also super funny. Yeah. I'm gonna also, Elsie uh, Myers is also super funny. But once again, only one of them has been on this podcast, Chris Olsen, so Chris Olsen wins. Chris Olsen wins, yeah. I don't know if anyone's had a bigger um, impact this year than uh, Dylan, Dylan Mulvaney. Mulvaney. Yeah, I was going to say that as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, breakout streamer. We don't watch streamers. Collabs. Creator for social good. And Oh, I actually love Invisible People. That's a really, really great series. I watch a ton of their episodes. Uh, creator product. Oh, wow. Okay, so I, I love how Shay Mitchell still gets, like she gets the crossover of being like an A-list real celebrity yeah. and then also in the creator category too. I also do love the base brand. As if AdSense is a meaningful line item um, in her. But also Popflex, I am ride or die fucking Popflex, you are a big Popflex for fan. life. I literally buy every single thing from Cassie's Drops. The, the, the product's incredible. I don't eat a lot of chocolate, so Feastables isn't for me, but I have definitely consumed about 10,000 calories worth of caffeine from Prime. So there's only 10 calories in there, which means that that's a lot of prime and I'm a little concerned, oh, but we sorry. covered this with Dr. Mike. 10,000 milligrams of caffeine? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only 10 milligrams of caffeine? 10 calories. Oh. 200 I milligrams of caffeine. Oh, okay, got it. Then I've had 100,000. Um, I actually like the Feastables chocolate. I would say the cookies are ass, but the Feastables chocolate bars are pretty good. Okay. Um, Crossover. See, like those are all just like actual famous people. <laughs> oh, Jonas Brothers. I'm the biggest Jonas Brothers. Yeah, I, I'm, Joe Bros. I'm becoming the biggest Joe Bro fan in the world. It's it's like out, out of control. Who wants to go to see them in, in LA with me? Because I'm going. <laughs> okay, I, so podcast. Call her daddy, H3, impulsive, on purpose well, with Jay oh, Shetty. Oh, you're, just, you're just skipping things. I don't know a lot of these. All right, podcast. What, is, what does VTuber mean? What does that mean? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see? Okay. Okay, podcast. Call her daddy, H3, impulsive, on purpose, Jay Shetty gets nominated every, every single year. fucking year. I feel like this category has not changed in I the mean, last five years. Let's let's be honest. Uh, Caller Daddy does not need to win anything new. 
uh, H3 podcast doesn't need to win anything new. No, H3, has H3 never won before? H3's never won. They always get nominated. But they get nominated. Yeah, it's like. Okay, so like, let's just give him the streamy so that they can have, have it this year then, I think. What do you think the most controversial um, category is? Controversial? Yeah. I don't know, but I'm just pissed off that Kyle Hanagami's not in the dance category. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, fashion and style. Oh, Gunnar. We, we love Gunnar. Love Gunner. Um, uh, gamer, health and wellness. Oh, Dr. Mike's in health and wellness. Okay, he can win. Hell yeah. Kind of feels unfair at this point, but yeah, he can win. Uh, learning and education, Colin and Samir, who we're trying to currently, I have been bombarding their email inbox trying to get Colin and Samir on the pod because I'm a huge Colin and Samir fan. I did compliment his shirt at the party the other day. I heard a hat the other day. Lifestyle, this is the category that I won. Okay. Uh, as, as a former champion. As a former champion. Who would you hand the baton to, my love? I mean, Bretman Rock is one of the funniest people on the internet. I feel like he's got read bigger- the, Read the nominees. So we've got AMP or AMP or whatever, which is what, it, that's like the group that Lexi Hensler came from with um, Brent and all them. Uh-huh. Uh, Bretman Rock, Charlie D'Amelio, Cara and Nate, who I'm not sure, and Sophia, is this actual Sophia Richie? Yes. What the fuck? What in the shit fuck? See, like when they do that, I'm like, do, are they trying to just get Sophia Richie to just come to the streaming so they can have someone? I don't know what gay news is, but they should win. Okay, so that's in a different category, they not in still lifestyle. Win. I, I feel like you feel uh, a little, some type of way about celebs being nominated for YouTube and streamy and creator awards. I don't feel some type of way. I'm just like kind of confused, I guess. Well, what constitutes a creator? Fucking everyone Cause now. like no one, everyone got tired of influencer, which I understand. Yeah, totally. And then it became like the creator class. And mm -hmm. then content creators. Mm -hmm. So what constitutes a creator? I'm just confused by the uh, the rubric that they're using. Well, what, what is the rubric? That's what I'm saying. What the fuck's the rubric? Because I'm so confused how we have Charlie D'Amelio, Bretman Rock, Amp, and Sophia Ritchie. Like, that's just, that feels so random. I, I mean, I feel like most of these shows at this point are uh, just barely hanging on by the thread. What shows? All of the award shows. Oh, like streamies or like, uh, like other Everything award Everything in shows. general, yeah. But I feel, like, I feel like it's so difficult to come up with, like I wish that, honestly, mm -hmm. you know what I wish they had? Mm -hmm. I wish they had the racist awards. I wish they had the sexist. I wish Jesus they, Christ, I wish, the people who got canceled? I wish they just doubled down on what Whoa. they actually cared about and didn't play the game of like, we're gonna try and- Oh, and, right, I and like appease just, all the genres. Yes. That's what's so confusing. Cause I'm like, this is the most random fucking right. category. I, I almost wish that like, <laughs> I think people who all have a, a very, uh, let's see, polarizing opinion on things mm -hmm. or just have their own biases, mm -hmm. should just have their own fucking award show. Just That's what H3 thing. does, he has the steamies. And it's and the trophy is a steaming pile of shit, which is fucking hysterical. I, everything you're saying makes me feel like I should watch more H three. Yeah, I, I, totally. I get it. I'm, I guess my point is, I just feel like people should be more real than less. And right now, no, this we're is what I'm saying. Like this feels, this feels like so like out of touch. You know what I mean? Not about it. It's just no. It's like trying to touch everything. Yeah, creepy. Like they have a whole category for celebrities here. Like everyone, crossover, right? But oh my god, there's a science in the science category. There's a show called I Did a Thing. Oh my god, that's my nightmare. It's my fucking nightmare. <laughs> This is my absolute nightmare. I'm sure the content that they're making is fucking incredible and so smart and my brain could never even comprehend the things that they're doing. But dear God, that title makes me want to die. I think that there's like a level of like uh, uh, pressure on all these celebrities to have a digital or creator or relatable bucket. Yeah. And some of them do a better job than others. But I agree with some of the stuff. I'm just like, I don't feel like, like when I see somebody whose name is like licensed for a brand mm -hmm. on a consumer product, like consumer packaged goods, that's just the name. You know, they had very little to do with it. Yeah. There's very few YouTubers who I feel like, or sorry, there's very few celebrities who I think have been able to successfully start a YouTube channel and like embrace the spirit of like yeah. what being like a, you know, quote unquote regular creator is. But I also think that's based off the fact that a lot of celebrities yeah. that are huge, that have like a massive number of people who are aware of them, mm -hmm. don't control any percent of their distribution. Totally. Like when Brie Larson started a YouTube channel, she was right. fucking like, she crushed it. Absolutely right. crushed it because like, it was so like real and raw and authentic. And like, that's why people love YouTube, I feel like. But to my point, it's just, I don't, I don't think that like most of these, like when you become a massive celebrity, yeah, it feels weird to almost like, you would have to like intentionally mm -hmm. stop feeding that side of the beast 
to create Absolutely. this other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course, I feel like most YouTubers have like editors and stuff like that to like help them. But celebrities have massive fucking teams and they would have to be like, hey, can I take 10% of you guys? And to but help even me with if my they channel? did have an editor, they would get like a super professional, like they would try to make a small movie out of everything. Right, they and need to hire people, an 18 year old TikToker to edit their yes, stuff. Yes, like most yeah. people are gonna, I mean, everyone's yeah. watching it on this anyway. Yeah. So it's just like, stop making a movie out of everything. Okay, I, okay, just just wanna just wanna clip this moment here within within Wild Till Nine, uh -huh. so that when you're adjusting the light for the 19th hundred time, everyone's watching on this little tiny box. But that brings me joy. That brings you joy. And we will continue doing that. Good. Okay, what else we got here? Agency of the year. I also, okay, hold on. I also think there's a difference between <sighs> someone who's never created like the the ground up production around something mm -hmm. and then hiring it all done at a level of like a movie to get it to be a certain level of like a certain threshold of quality versus trying to actually create the level of quality yourself. I think those are two very different things. What do you mean? Like. When Will Smith tried, like started his YouTube channel yeah. years ago, mm. that was a joint effort between the folks at YouTube and his agents at CAA. And totally. it was a nine figure endeavor of like buying ad space, buying all these huge stunts and everything and having like- like Oh, it was like a campaign. Little small little movies or yeah. everything. And like, that's all good and well, that's great. Mm -hmm. But like, I would have been more impressed had like Will Smith done all of it actually himself at one tenth of the quality. Right, right, but like, right, right. right. In knowing that he was, you know, more hands on with like the shit that I'm sure he's never had to deal with anymore, mm -hmm. that would be really interesting for me anyway. Yeah. And so I, I just think there's like a little bit more of a relatable element when you like that, you know, the people that you're watching are also in charge of whether or not the thing gets off the ground and any improvements mm -hmm. also has to do with them or the people that are like directly linked to them, not like the agent call, like calling out, bringing in a production team to have three different bids over this thing. I think it's okay to have a production team because totally. like having help, especially like, you know, the schedules that I'm sure Will Smith, someone like him has, like I think totally fine to have a production team, but it's like when it loses the voice where it just feels like it's another like blockbuster movie. Oh, totally. It's like, okay, well, what is this doing on YouTube? I guess my thought is, as long as you are in control of what you're creating yeah, yeah. and like you're willing to actually put your stamp on it, mm -hmm. I think that's creating Yeah. versus something being done for company, you. And, and then making the narrative and the story of what it's gonna be. Also the difference like, are you playing your role yeah. in somebody else's production or are you creating the production and mm -hmm. part of that includes your role that you play in it. Like those are two very different things. When Zac Efron started a YouTube channel, he got <laughs> a lot of, like people talked a lot of shit because like yeah. they were like, oh, Zac Efron's YouTube channel totally flopped. Yeah. But I was like, oh my God, no, like I fucking love that he's just like doing like random nature bro shit because that's obviously like what he actually wants to be doing. Right. Like people thought they were getting Troy Bolton, but they were just getting like nature boy Zac. Like what did they want by the way? They, they wanted like traipsing around a, a high school in- like, Cause people were like, oh, this is boring. Like this is boring. I didn't sign up for this. Right. But I'm like, no, like, this, is, this is great. Like he's just like making a channel and like, creating the shit that he wants to create that's like actually true to him. Like even if it didn't like, you know, reach like the widest audience, people are subscribing probably, well, I mean, I'm sure there's people who are subscribing because it's Zac Efron and he has to like swim with a shirt off. But like, I'm sure that a lot of that audience too are people who are like just interested in the outdoorsy shit that he's doing. I, I also like, he should be able to create whatever the fuck he wants to create. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. So anyways, those are our real half-ass sure, predictions. I'm not sure we answered any of, of those. Us stumbling through the streamies of the nomination. Our goal is to next year be closer to being nominated to the list so that we can hopefully be next to the people who win. Oh, That's God. not our goal, but it would be. I'd be thrilled. I honestly, I'm just happy to be there. It's always just like a fun night because it like brings so many creators together, like people that you have talked to and like had parasocial relationships with True. or just like, social media relationships with it for so long and people you know, fly into LA for it and it's always like a, a fun time. We're going to see Drake tomorrow. We are. Sundays, streamies. It's a packed week. And I, oh my God, this week is head spa week. I'm so excited. The head spa sounds like the dirtiest fucking innuendo you could imagine. <laughs> uh, going to get my head professionally massaged. Got it. So what I'm gathering from the last hour is that the title of this podcast is going to be Accidental Taliban, oh, eel, eel Talk. Eel Pit, uh, Girl Math. Girl Math. Yeah, we're going to have to really workshop this one. Oh my God. And the Head Spa Finale. If you are still here at this point in the podcast, please Get leave us. <laughs> no, no, no. Say, give us, give us a, give us a secret code. Say, say hi, Shaquille O'Eal. If you DM us Shaquille O'Eal or comment it, we will do our best to... <laughs> Uh, and thank you for saying that that is, that is literal charity work that you have been at this, at this far in the podcast.
that today. Like, subscribe, do all the things. We will see you next week. We'll see you next week, Latvia. Bye. Goodbye.